So if you have a question, uh, please unmute yourself or just um, during the talk and I'll leave the space open for informal discussion after the talk. Okay, and so the talk is supposed to be one hour, but we are flexible about time, but uh, we start already like seven minutes later, so you can consider the time uh, appropriately. Awesome. Okay, so it's great pleasure to have Shin Wang from Kiev. Uh, he's gonna tell us about electric blow up equation for 60 CFD. Uh, so first of all, thanks for the invitations uh, to give me a chance to talk here. I would like to talk about talk about the LED blow-up equations for 60 CFTs that we developed in the recent three years. Uh, this talk is based on these following papers uh, we wrote, uh, where the first one is about blow-up equations for refined logical strings. And this and these four papers in the first in the recent two years is about uh, by generalize the blob equations for topological strings on elliptic fiber calabial threefolds, uh, which leads to the partition function, uh, which due to the partition function of the CFT CFTs. So in, in this talk, I will first introduce the CFT CFTs, and uh, I will give a brief introduction or review to the blob equations for refined topological strings. And uh, based on the generalizations, we, I will introduce the elliptic blow, up, elliptic blow up equations and then give some examples. So before I start, I, I should uh, comment what is an SCFT. Uh, it is a quantum field theory with specific symmetries. The first one is conformal symmetries, uh, and another one is supersymmetries. Uh, there are UV uh, series of interactions with interactions at low energies. So why we uh, consider six CFTs? One important reason is that the maximum CFTs with interactions is six. Uh, there are basically two types of supersymmetries. The first one is 2,0 and is T-duality 1,1, and the other one is 1,0 symmetries. Usually, you, they are very hard to de to describe because they are non-Lagrangian series. We cannot have very direct description to the series, um, and if we we have some some classification to these six CFTs, we can do the further compactification to give a classification of five D, four D, three D, and two D CFTs. We can also do some IR flaws to consider uh, to. To, to give um, information on the IR series. Uh, so the first class is 2,0 series. They can be obtained by considering a type 2B theory on ARE space, which, has, which is a space with C2 over uh, AD singularities. By considering the resolution of, uh, which involves CP1s, and the CP1's intersection matrix between the CP1's form a Cartan match of ADE type. Uh, specifically for, for A1 type, this is just the M strings. The 1,0 theory can relax the condition by considering an F theory on elliptic Calabial threefold, which gives a, a 1,0 series. The elliptic fiber calabial three folds is a is a calabial with elliptic fiber, and uh, along the dividers of the basis there are some singular fibers. The section of the calabial three folds is is described by the elliptic curve, which can be written in terms of wear stress form. Uh, with a function with the invariant f and the g and the delta discriminant delta to be the functions of the parameters of the basis. This curve in principle is invariant under the SL2Z transformation where, where okay. sorry? There are any questions? Oh, maybe, sorry. Um, under the SL2Z transformations of the complex structure T, uh, this curve is invariant, especially for this F and G it is invariant. So, 
uh, let's first consider a divider in the base, which is described by by the sorry, uh, described by the uh, by t equal to zero, and along such a divisor, uh, the fiber is singular. This singular fiber is classified by Kodala, uh, where the, the the zero order of f and g and delta will give the corresponding uh, group structure uh, of the of the singular fibers. Uh, we call them Kodala type. Uh, this uh, Koda, this singular uh, this uh, curve can be uh, written in a more refinement form that we uh, we consider a curve generic curve on a per, with projective space one two three, and uh, this curve this is the most gen generic curve on on this uh, with projective space. There are in total five different coefficients: uh, a one, a two, a three, uh, a four, a six. Uh, by considering the order of each parameters uh, near the dividers, uh, uh, for example, t equal to zero, uh, we can determine the gauge groups uh, involving uh, the folding of the ADE type. Let's give a, a table, sorry. Uh, for example, this is a table of the order uh, of the mapping from the order and the groups. By reading, uh, by reading the, for example, this part uh, is the order of each parameters. By reading the zero degree, zero degree, we could read the corresponding uh, group structure. Uh, by considering F theory on it, we get the corresponding uh, series with the corresponding gauge groups in with this type. Uh, uh, based on this geometrical description and uh, based on this geometrical description and the F theory compatibility uh, and many other constraints in six CFTs, uh, they are actually classified by considering F theory uh, geometries. Uh, among the classification, the most important one would be the non-hispal clusters. Uh, for example, uh, there are uh, two. For example, they can describe a single curve with minus m in a uh, minus m uh, in self-intersection number uh, with a gauge group to be uh, SU3, SO8, and F4, E6, E7, 8 with an m range from minus two, uh, minus three to minus twelve. And we can. There are also three kinds of uh, higher rank non hispal cluster. Uh, with gauge group G2 SU2 or G2 SU2 with an extra curve without gauge group or SO7 with two SU2 gauge group. Uh, the, the intersection point uh, have us have half multiplets uh, from it. Uh, the 60 SCFTs have a very important um, function on, on it. Uh, we, we call it uh, partition functions. And they can be, uh, usually the partition function is, is no, there's no direct way to compute it because we, we don't know the Lagrangian. But we somehow can have the worksheet description for this series. Uh, it turns out that this series expands in terms of the elliptic, elliptic genera, uh, where the EK is just the elliptic genera would be the worksheet supersymmetric index. Uh, this E case uh, actually is a Jacobi form uh, of width zero and index i. The index, uh, which means under the SL2Z transformation to the Jacobi form, we have an extra term where the epsilon is an um, uh, is a imaginary part, and uh, together with an extra term uh, in terms of the index i. So uh, to uh, the elliptic genus is a very important quantity. Uh, in order to compute it, we we have some method. The first one would be the most direct method from from the worksheet uh, field uh, worksheet description. We have we know the field contents, uh, and we have the ADHM constructions. We can then using the localization method to compute the JK residue. And we we have a very uh, compact, a uh, closed form. 
But this method have some uh, shortages because sometimes we cannot have a, it's very hard to, to guess or get uh, the worksheet description. It makes some series cannot be described in this method. Another method would be the modular bootstrap. Uh, as, I, I as I have said, the elliptic genus is uh, Jacobi forms. If we know the post structures, we can make some answers on, on the denominator, denominators. Just a very important pro property of the uh, Jacobi form is that it can be any Jacobi form of fixed weight and index can be written in terms of finite uh, rings. With this property, we, we somehow fix a denom denominator from, some, from the answers and uh, fix uh, the numerators from some, some condition like vanishing condition, which means uh, if you expand it in terms of uh, BPS invariants, the spin is finite for a fixed degree. Or some other uh, symmetries or constraints, you could, anything you could, cons you could imagine. And in this talk, I will um, basically mainly introduce uh, elliptic blow-up equations, uh, which will, which is another method uh, to solve the elliptic genus. Uh, before I go into the uh, the description, let's first uh, give a dis describe about uh, describe the dualities between these theories to see how we uh, how the our uh, research work. Uh, first of all, there is a duality between F theory and M theory. As I said, the, the six ECFTs can be described, especially the one comma uh, zero type, can be described by an F theory compatified compatified on an elliptic fiber calabial threefold. If we uh, further do a further compatification, for example, we compatify it on a uh, elliptic calabial threefold where the x is an elliptic fiber calabial threefold times a torus T2. We get a type 2b theory on the same, on the calabial threefold. So this type 2b theory is T duality to the type 2a theory on the same x. And this can be lived to an M theory on S1 times x. So using this T duality, we actually have such a duality that which is F theory on the Calabial threefolds times T2 times R4 due to M theory on X times S1 and R4. The complex structure parameter tau becomes a killer parameter in the, M, in the Calabial side. Uh, another important property is that it's, it is well known that um, the BPS states of M theory on a Calabial threefold is captured by topological spring theory on the on on this Calabial threefold. In our case, this X is a elliptic fiber Calabial threefold. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, from the topological string description, we can know the pole easily, uh, and uh, actually we in in this. Uh, five papers, or maybe some papers are missing here. Uh, they, they did the so-called modular bootstrap to the elliptic genus. They gave a conjecture on the denominators and uh, they fixed the numerators from other conditions. Uh, the good method for, for the modular bootstrap is once you get the, res once you get the result, it is, a, it is exact. You can expand to any order you want. But the hard thing is that in this method is very uh, it's difficult for higher base degrees, because the re the reason is that you have many uh, generators in the in the numerator, like ten billions even I would say, it's very hard to to fix the coefficient. So the, another method I I would comment is a uh, so-called blow-up equations. Uh, so this method, uh, this method is we developed in the recent years. Uh, we can, for, for many models, we can use recursive relation to infinite base degrees. Uh, and uh, we have a very explicit expression. 
uh, even though I would say uh, we have a recursion relation, it's still very hard to to solve it. But anyhow, we have an expression for it. If you want to do it, do do the do the computations. So, uh, before I entering into the elite blob equation, I would first draw attention what is the blob equation in in four D theory. Uh, so. Uh, the blow up equation, the form of the blow up, blow up equation we used in our papers was first uh, introduced by Nakajima and Yoshioka uh, in 2003. Uh, they, um, usually we consider an equivalent local, equivalent partition function on R4, on R4, but they consider something different. They consider the blow up on, on this R4 uh, where there would be two fixed points instead of one in the in the center, and this two fixed point actually you by using localization method will give two pieces of uh, partition functions in this form. A mathematical theory states that these two partition functions actually are equal. For many cases, uh, up to a, a coefficient lambda. For many cases, this lambda is just one. Uh, uh, in 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 our first paper, we argue that this lambda should be a weight zero quasi Jacobi form for arbitrary local Calabria threefold threefold that supports refinement. Uh, the width zero uh, quasi Jacobi form is a very uh, useful uh, property. Uh, as, as such that uh, if we we further suppose that this lambda only contains finite terms, uh, finite terms is actually a modular form of, of width zero, which means uh, it's just a constant, which means um, it is invariant under the modular transformations. So these statements uh, guarantee that the lambda only depend on so-called mass parameters, do not depend on the parameters like the, the valve of the coolant branch. No, they don't depend on it. Only the masses of the matters. Uh, under this assumption, uh, we could immediately get the property. The first property is the blob equation itself is modular invariant, which makes the equation non-perturbative. For example, we can do some mm, SP symplectic transformation to transform the equation to any point in the modular space, like the conifer point. You you do the S transformations, you do the S duality, you transform the uh, uh, to the magnetic uh, point. Uh, for example, for SU2 theory. We also uh, have an equation uh, for SU2 theory at the coning four point in our first paper. Another important property is that uh, under some certain condition, for example, there are enough equations, we can, uh, we can use a recursion relation to solve the partition function with only uh, the input of tree and one loop level uh, informations. Uh, based on the value of lambda, we we give the two names to the equations. The first the first class is when lambda is not zero, we call it unity blob equations. The another case is when when lambda is zero, we call it uh, vanishing equations. Uh, so, so here we have a look at the structure of the of the prepotential. Uh, the prepotential is a is a consistent of two parts, uh, mainly two parts, where the leading part is a cubic potential uh, depends on the intersection uh, triple intersection numbers a i j k, and t is a killer class, the parameters. Uh, here the n is a is a famous Gromov-Witten invariant, and t is a a killer parameter that parameterize the killer class. So we actually could solve all BPS invariants recursively 
from from this guy with un, with only unity block equations. Uh, to be more precise, um, for generic uh, refined topological string theory, uh, there exists such a formula. This part is uh, the instanton and uh, times a so-called lambda equal to another a product uh, over over the instanton partition functions, where you can under somehow understand this r epsilon shift as a flux. Uh, of the corresponding uh, blow-up geometry. Uh, I have to comment here that the lambda is usually one for most 5D series, but uh, but there indeed exists some the lambda is not one. Here the f is in general quadratic function on n, uh, and r must satisfy we call it B field condition, which means uh, for each degree, the r times d, there, ex there exists a constant for each geometry such that for every r and every d, uh, there the b the r time r times d equal to b times d equal to the two times uh, jl two times jr plus one where the jl jr is the spins of the bps in the bps contents. Uh, I have a question. All right. Uh, how do you determine this uh, factor lambda? Uh, as I have said, the lambda do not depend on the, the so-called true killer parameter or the value of the current branch parameters. With this sense, if you just divide this in, in the instant to this part, the lambda is just a leading term of the right-hand side, which do not contains the value of the Coulomb branch parameters. No, uh, well, no, but but that is like you, you're running things backwards. So you you have you already have the, so you should already know the instant one to figure figure out the lambda. Uh, that's right. So so my statement in, indicates that we we actually do not the, the instant one because the instant one always contains uh, some you you could say the the so-called true parameters. So the lambda is completely determined by only this piece. Could you see it? Um, yeah. It's a leading term of this piece. So, so the, the basic strategy is you compute the mini, minimum, minimum value of each fi. You first compute the minimal value of fi because f is a quadratic form, quadratic function of n. You can have the minimal value, it, it has minimal values. And then you compute the minimal values of each FI to make the whole summation uh, do not depend on the value of uh, current branch parameters. Then the value is lambda. So this is actually work for 60 series. Is that clear enough? I mean, so so here that like, you're you're starting from this kind of time sets for um, for the instant partition function and try to fix that lambda by assuming that this this time sets full. By uh, what? Assuming this uh this time sets full. Yeah, that's right. The, this factor lambda by evaluating the low low value of n. That's right. And you already know what the what this quadratic function f i is. is. Yeah, we know it. Right. Okay. Because the f i can be determined from the uh, triple intersection numbers. Yeah, so what, where is this condition about r coming from? Uh, you mean the, the big r in, in my, sorry. Yeah, the, 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 the second, second point. Uh, so there's a very interesting constraint on, on the on the minimum of fi. Uh, so you, you see it there are for example there are a three a two killer parameters. You have two fi. That's right. And uh, sometimes if one if f, there are two fi we call it f one and f two. 
if one FI go to the minimum of the uh, at the minimum value, but the second FI is not, so this cannot this is not a solution uh, we want. So we, we have to let all the FI go to the minimal value simultaneously. This will give a very strong constraint on the big R. So from this method, we fix our, uh, we fix all the possible Rs. And it turns out that from the Rs we fix are uh, indeed correct. So, so I hear what, what, what is T? What is what? T? T. Uh, a B, I mean, no, D, uh, D. D. Yeah. This D? Yeah. Uh, this D is a degree of the, I mean, the large volume expansion. Mm -hmm. And here, what, which one becomes the instanton for gas T? Uh, I, I wrote everything in, inside this guy. So, I so don't it's some know. some some of yeah. the T. Yeah, some of the T. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so for, so so for so as I already explained, this I find can be uh, solved from the triple intersection number completely. Uh, maybe plus another uh, contribution from one loop. Well, for sixty, we. Uh, we simply uh, conjecture such a classical, uh, I mean, uh, contribution, uh, where you can see that the first, the first line comes from the one loop, where I, I made some di different description here is that the alpha only sum over a positive roots, and the weight only sum of half of the uh, weight systems. The second line comes from the tree, val tree, uh, tree level over Versley. Uh, so this part becomes uh, uh, the 5D uh, coupling for the instant counting parameters. The only difference from 5D and 6D here you could see is that we have an extra term in like this. So uh, this form is actually a test uh, checked from the geometric constructions of many models. And uh, uh, indeed, from our uh, Levy Blob equations derived from this guy, it should be indeed correct for all the 60 uh, CFTs, I mean, especially for rank one series. For higher rank series, uh, we also have a conjecture, but it's a little bit complicated, and uh, maybe I don't uh, talk about it in this in today's talk. Uh, there is a very important thing I want to address that uh, in the physical, uh, uh, in the field theory side, uh, the one loop part, the one loop part for the uh, hypermultiplex contains the whole weight system, but here I I would say there could only exist half of them. The reason is that uh, if we if I want to consider a geometry uh, for this series. The geometry could only uh, support half of them in the instant in the instant part. The the reason is that uh, we have a we want to have a, a, a I mean large volume expansion in terms of the Keller class, and because of it, its Keller class, the degree must be positive. We cannot let a weight and its manners and its manners appear in the instant part simultaneously. Uh, so, so actually, the lambda comes from the the leading part of lambda comes from the second derivative over this guy in terms of killer killer class. Uh, so the second derivative over this guy actually gives a n square times tau, uh, which gives rise to a Jacobi theta function. And this part. Uh, gives the uh, elite parameters of the Jacobi theta function. So uh, by by further considering the one the complete one loop contribution, uh, this this part is cancelled with uh, cancelled with uh, uh, other one loop contributions. 
Um, note that when the lambda uh, should contains the tau because the, the tau is a is a is a complex structure parameters in F theory, but it turned out to be a killer parameters in the topological string theory, which belong to the mass parameters. Uh, which means uh, the TM only contains the tau and um, the masses of the flavor groups. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can you go back to one slide? So what is the MG? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, these are a few gasities of the gauge and flavor groups. Sorry, I didn't uh, give an explanation okay. to that. Okay, what is the tau, sorry? Uh, I mean, the tau is the, is the elite parameters of the torus. Okay. See, but, we, we always consider 60 CFT on okay. T2 and R4. And, and that, what's T elliptic in the case TL? Uh, it's a, um, you, you could see, let's go back to the page. It's exponential to TL. Oh, a, I see, I see, okay. Oh, in, in some sense, <laughs> in some counting parameter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it comes from the web of tensor branch. Okay. And in which sense this is the elliptic blob equation? In which sense? Oh, uh, we give the name elliptic blob equation because uh, there's a lot of zeta functions in the equation, and and it's a kind of uh, different. No, I, what, what I mean, why, why this is, is blow-up equation? Uh, uh, first of all, we, we, still, we are still considering a topological string theory. Okay. We can okay. use our, uh, the result in our, in our first paper. So we have already- Blow-up equation means there's somehow a quota uh, relation between this instant oh, partition okay. function. But I cannot see where, where this relation. Uh, so uh, this equation, if you can actually, uh, even it's not proved, but I, I think you can actually consider the blow up of R4 times T2. You blow up the same point on R4 side. After you're doing that, uh, there are also South Pole and North Pole, and um, this partition function on the new blow up geometry actually equals to the initially one but plus some actual uh, theta function which comes for the contributions. No, I, I'm asking which, in which sense this, the equation you have written is a blow up equation. You mean next page? Okay, next page, okay. So you go, you explain next page, okay. Yeah, yeah that's Okay, right. thanks. I mean, this, this equation is a blow up equation actually. Sorry, maybe I, I made some confusion. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now, now I'm happy, thanks. Yeah, sorry for that. So, so I'm, I'm also sorry again. This this formula looks complicated. I mean, because there are we make it more generic, and uh, there are a lot of parameters. And uh, but I will explain each of them. So let's look at the structure. So first of all, this theta is a lambda just common. You see it, and this theta is uh, is a contribution uh, from the so-called perturbative uh, part. Uh, you, you could almost see the tree level contribution from here. You see it? And uh, this part actually uh, comes from the tree level and the one loop level and will uh, give some sort of flux like term. And uh, um, this D1 and D2 uh, is, a, is a D1 and D2 here. Uh, so the equation is mainly like the D1 plus D2 plus some so-called D0 uh, from, the, uh, from the R field of the uh, gauge fugacities uh, equal to the elliptic genus uh, at degree, at uh, the K string, the D string elliptic genus uh, times another theta function. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jawan uh, asked me how the lambda is achieved from, from this hand side. Let's first look at the, uh, the limit of this hand side. As I have said, the, the theta, uh, the lambda will only contain the, 
the tau and the, the, the masses of flavor fugacities, uh, you see it, this part cannot contribute, can, this, this two part comes from the inciton, uh, one loop or, or actually indeed inciton could not contribute to the lambda. And this theta will, uh, will come from the contribution here. We only come to a contribution of this theta function. So by setting all the unwanted parameters to zero, like mg to zero, and you see that d zero must be also zero, and this is also zero. We, we just give rise to the theta function uh, here, which will be the lambda. So this lambda is completely a leading part of this uh, of this hand sign. Uh, so we always use uh, the frac mass frac n to be the uh, the manners of the intersection numbers in the base, which means this is the manners n curve in the base, and the g is a gauge group uh, along the base, and f is a the, the f is a flavor symmetry of the theory. Uh, here we. We comment that uh, this equation uh, there's a, a special a special value we call it y u equal to this guy. Uh, and uh, there's another information we call it lambda f, uh, which will be the orbit of the flavor groups uh, that satisfy all the constraints. Uh, so this guy could be uh, one half uh, because okay uh, because SU two is always some subgroups uh, of the representation. So you can somehow always choose it to be one half. So I mentioned that there are some constraint on the parameter on, on the lambda f one uh, constraint. Uh, so the first constraint we we during our derivation we get uh, from the modularity uh, of the whole equation holds. We have such a constraint, which means the dimension of the flavor representation have to satisfy uh, equal to such an equation, uh, where the H G. Uh, is called hat uh, would be the dual Cox number of the gauge group, and uh, the RG is uh, the index RG is the index of the gauge representations. We indeed, as as we have checked, is valid for all the rank one theories. Another constraint is a constraint on on lambda f, which we call it B field condition. Uh, after uh, uh, it's just uh, for 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 the weight for the weight in the weight system. It times for every weight in the weight systems of the flavor group, uh, there exists a lambda f that times the weight should be always plus or minus one half. So uh, there are indeed models that this this there is no uh, such lambda do not exist. For example, for for series with unpaired half multiplies. This lambda actually do not exist, which means the equation I wrote in the previous page do not hold. Uh, so that doesn't mean there's no blob equation for them. Uh, I just want to say there's no unity blob equation for them, which means the lambda have to be zero and you have to choose another, uh, uh, I mean, the weight here and the uh, RF to make the equation hold. Uh, in this, uh, but the vanishing equation somehow is uh, less useful because it, it provides less constraint on the ellipse genus. So in this talk, I, I don't have, I don't talk the vanishing block equations. Uh, let's have a, have a look at the, have a look at the, the sorry. Have a look at the series uh, which support uh, unity block equations. Uh, this is a classification from uh, from the paper of Loka de Zotto, and uh, this column means uh, inter, uh, the intersection number in the basis, and this is a gauge group. 
this column is the uh, flavor groups of the theory, and this is the uh, uh, representations of the uh, at the intersection point of the of the theory. So for all the red theories, there is no uh, unity block equations. Uh, for all the black theories, there are indeed ha uh, there are there are block, unity block equations in, and in, which, in which way we can use a recursion relation to solve them. Uh, indeed, as we, we solve the frame of the recursion relation, uh, the, the one string elliptic indeed agree with, uh, um, we agree with those that appear in the paper of Lockhart Zotos uh, when you turn off the mass and the gate for fugacities. Uh, is there any questions up to now? Uh, okay, uh, after I introduce the structure of the elliptic block equation, uh, we mainly dis uh, establish three methods uh, to solve it. The first method we call it BPS expansion because it is well known that uh, this, uh, uh, this partition functions can be expanded in terms of uh, BP, uh, this BPS contents. We, we prove that if you have the unity block equation and you input with a pre-potential, you can always solve the, uh, all the BPS invariants. Uh, uh, however, this, uh, there are equations like series with half multiplies. There are only vanishing equations uh, we suggest that uh, if you have the free energy in the NS limit, uh, you could still solve it, but, but we didn't explore so much in this direction. Uh, uh, the second method is uh, well known that even appear in the, in the paper of uh, Professor Nakajima and Yoshioka that when, when the number of equations uh, greater than three, and the, the theory have unity block equations, you could always uh, use a recursion formula, use a so-called recursion formula to solve the Partition function recursively and completely. Uh, if the number of equations is not enough, we, we also propose a method, we call it where OB expansion. Uh, we make some answers on the structure of the uh, on the on the epigenus, especially the one string epigenus, uh, we, to, we by using only one unity equations, we we solve uh, we can in principle also solve them completely. Um, uh, for example, the, the the examples we mainly considering the BPS expansions for for those we call it uh, rank one uh, minimal models. Uh, which belong to the Nakisbo clusters. Uh, I have a one question. Can you go back one slide? Okay. So what do you mean banishing here? Like, uh, I, I said that depends on the, the value of lambda, whether it's zero or non-zero, uh -huh. we call it unity or vanishing equations. Oh, I see. I see. For vanishing I see. equations, the lambda is just zero. Okay, but how do you, so, so you say you can solve Brock equation once you know the prepotential? Uh, if, if, the, if the theory have unity Brock equation and uh, also we know the prepotential, we can do that. Oh, okay. That's okay, thanks. So uh, I also have a question. So do you know, I mean, um, like, why you get both unity and uh, vanishing mm -hmm. equation? So exactly where you get, yeah, do you understand when do you get the, the vanishing equation, for example? Uh, yes, from our master, we can also know when we get the vanishing equations uh, because the lambda can be, as I said, can be, the lambda as I said can be defined from the, the leading term of this part. If the leading term is zero, then it is definitely a vanishing equation. A definitely a vanishing equation. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that is that, that is something you can do at the at the level technical level, but like in, in a more like a 
The fundamental principle, where do you get that? You mean for which theory? For generic I mean, theory? So suppose you're given some, some 60 CFT and um, mm -hmm. you want to write down a blob equation for that. So you can get many equations. So um, the, the, the question is that, can you know, uh, like, can you actually figure out before you actually do this computation? Uh, I would say for, indeed for unity equations, we, we, we have some universal property, like the R field for the gauge frequency is always uh, like, like this. And lambda is always belong to some, some width system. Indeed for vanishing one, we, we couldn't say too much before we actually check it. That's my answer. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean the, the reason why I'm asking this is that actually in 40 version of the blob equation, there's mm -hmm. also a similar um, thing that you, you can have a vanishing equation. Oh, uh, <laughs> Professor Nakajima himself is here. <laughs> so, yeah, in, in the 4D, you can actually show that there is a uh, both vanishing and kind of unity type equation by arguing from the conservation of the um, the broken U1 R charge. Okay. So because for the non um, conformal theories, okay. you break U1 R symmetry to some discrete subgroup, mm -hmm. and by um, uh, keeping track of the conserved charge under that discrete, discrete R symmetry, you can actually easily argue that um, certain blow of equation should give you a vanishing condition. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm wondering if you can have a similar argument in this um, elliptic version of the blow of equation. I, I think um, even in our paper, we are wondering whether the vanishing equation is indeed correct or not. So <laughs> Indeed, we cannot say too much for the vanishing ones. <laughs> uh, okay. But for unity, we can say many things. Mm. Okay. Sorry, okay. I cannot have an explanation for the vanishing equation. Okay, all right. Thanks. Uh, so let's first uh, give an inter introduce for the BPX ex expansion method. Uh, it turns out that the, the, when, you, when you compute the BPX uh, contents from the block equation, it, it becomes a problem of decomposition of, of Laurent polynomials. Uh, it seems to be, it is the most effective method for computing the refined BPX environment because you, you could uh, solve, the, solve the BPX environment from degree to degree recursively to any degree you want. Sorry, what do you mean decomposition of Laurent polynomial? Uh, it's it's a little bit uh, technical, so I oh. I don't have the formula oh, here, okay. but it turns out that uh, the computation becomes decomposition of some uh, Laurent uh, determine the coefficients before the Laurent polynomials. That coefficients would be the the BPS invariance you want. Okay, thanks. Uh, so another uh, another or, or the mo most famous one would be the recursion formula. Uh, let's consider an expansion uh, of the formula uh, blob equation uh, in terms of the the QELL elliptic parameters. Uh, so so first of all, let's write the equation at degree d. Uh, you will uh, you will see uh, three uh, different d string elliptic with different parameters and this i d minus one comes from the contribution from lower uh, strings so suppose we already uh, know the lower string elliptic we want to solve the d string elliptic uh, we can if we have enough uh, you see we we have a special parameter a we, we argue that the number of a always equal to uh, the number, uh, the, the the value of the the absolute value of the intersection uh, uh, self intersection numbers, n. If, if n is greater uh, greater or equal than three, we can always use three different equation with different value a 
to cancel two extra unknown ED, or unwanted ED to solve this ED. It turns out that we have such a, a recursion formula uh, like this. Uh, where the right hand side only comes from the lower uh, uh, degree of D string of or num lower number of strings uh, ellipticers or ellipticers. Uh, another method we we call it uh, where over expansion because we we know the theory must have some some where symmetry some over the flavor or gauge groups. Uh, so it turns out that uh, the, the final formula must be written, must, should be expressed in terms of uh, all bits of the corresponding flavor of gauge group. So uh, specifically for one string ellipticers, uh, if we set um, the gauge fugacity to be zero, uh, we know that the flavor fugacity only appear in the numerator, so the, the uh, Sorry, this is a denominator of ID minus one. Uh, we can have a conjectural form on, on the one string ellip genus. Uh, more precisely, uh, we, we more prefer to use a reduced uh, ellip genus by factor out uh, an parameter, uh, a factor, and uh, uh, we have a many a more beautiful form of it. Uh, so uh, from from the uh, two dimensional series, we we actually know the denominator, denominator and we can uh, put this guy in into the into the formula uh, by by using some symmetries. We can actually solve all the uh, possible uh, coefficients c n. I here. Uh, another another interesting uh, uh, structure we observed is that the coefficients here, if we expand it in terms of v, where v is just uh, defined as, as this a plus uh, e exponential to the half of the equivalent parameters. Uh, we have the structure that uh, the the v expansion of this guy always takes a form. It, it's similar to the Hilbert series when there is no matter, but but here when we have matter, it still has the form, which means a similar form, which means it's a it's a sum over product of uh, characters over gauge and flavor uh, groups. The coefficients could only be one. Manners one. Uh, let's give a, let's give two examples. Uh, the first one which would be the most easy one is a is a it's a sp one theory around the manners one curve. Uh, the one string uh, ellipticers is written ex in this in such expansion. You see that the coefficient is indeed plus or minus one here, and this is sp two theory over minus one curve, and you see the the coefficient is still plus or minus one. So we we actually uh, try to solve uh, the ser the theory list here, and compare the result with the local desoto for model bootstrap. They have a very a good uh, match. Uh, so the blob equation also works for two comma zero series. Uh, the first non-trivial theory would be M string theory uh, by turning on the U uh, the U one uh, charts. Uh, so the M string theory actually have a brain description which could be computed from the topological vertex method. Uh, which makes us possible to check our conjecture. Uh, for example, uh, the M string in the geometry side is a elliptic fiber calabial over a calabial twofold, uh, which is a minus two curve. 
Uh, by turning on the mass parameter, there are actually four unity block equation for M string. Uh, for ADE chains, uh, we propose that the block equation also exists and we actually check it uh, for the A2 theory. Uh, the theta function, the theta function I wrote actually becomes a Riemann theta function with a period metric in this form. All the, all the square, uh, n square becomes a quadratic form uh, of the corresponding uh, uh, groups. Uh, there are, in principle, two times uh, determined of the cutoff metric uh, unit table of equations. Uh, another interesting example would be E string because uh, sometimes E string uh, in the topological string side can be interpreted as a topological string on local half K3, uh, which is a nine point blow up of P2 uh, with this P2 uh, divisor and uh, nine blow up dividers. Sometimes I also denote this divide, uh, this killer parameters with the same uh, divider, uh, with the same symbol. Uh, in the E string side, the flavor symmetry is a uh, affine E8, is a fine E8, and we we after uh, we determine that there are 240 unit block equations, which is a uh, orbit, uh, the first non-trivial orbit of E8. Uh, so the six, I, I, I comment in the in the first page. The 60 is very important for, for studying the, the lower dimensional theories. Uh, so here is the examples for the reduction uh, in the block equation. So uh, by, by blowing down the E string geometries, we actually will give rise to uh, 5D series with, uh, with uh, one super symmetry, uh, n equal to one SO2 gauge theory with NF fundamental matters, the NF running from uh, one to eight, or oh, oh seven, you, you could. <laughs> uh, so the number of equations will reduce the, uh, uh, when, you, when you're doing blow down because some equations become the same under the blowing down. Uh, there are some, uh, this blow down mass, uh, by doing the blow down, we have to cancel the divergence uh, occurs, uh, which tends to be a uh, which tends to be very easy if you consider some flop transitions between the curves. Uh, so, uh, an important uh, an important uh, geometry is uh, is this one, because in in our in our paper in 2017, 2017 we uh, we determined by we determine the R field from the master I, I said, there are 28 unity block equations. As, well, as we have checked from the blowing down of E string, we indeed get 28 unity block equations. Sorry for that. So, so here is a structure for, uh, for the, Sorry, maybe there are too many uh, uh, undefined symbols, but this is a structure for for these block equations. You see the, you see that for for some cases uh, the lambda could be one, but for many of them they cannot be one. Uh, specifically for for the for the SO two theory with seven uh, flavor masses, all twenty four uh, block equations take the form here. So uh, if you set uh, the lambda to be ones, you cannot get the correct answer. So the time would be up and uh, here I give a summary to today's talk. Uh, I, I first give an introduction to 60 CFTs and uh, reviewed the blob equations for refined the topological strings based on the modularity property of the refined topological strings. And then I, I, I give the elliptic blob equations based on for six, six CFTs by translating the language of uh, uh, for F theory description to the M theory description. 
and then to the topological string on a elliptic fiber parabial threefold. I, I then give the examples which, uh, uh, which would be the minimal CFTs do not have matters and the uh, one comma zero series with matters and uh, as well as uh, E strings and other two comma zero theories. I, I then have a discussion on the E string flow to 5D, which give many interesting uh, agreement with my previous papers. Uh, there are many uh, interesting future directions. Uh, the first one would be there are many other uh, 5D theory could be obtained from 60. The most interesting one would be the twisted chromatification, which turned out to be genus one fibration carabial manifold, uh, which turned out to be M theory on genus one uh, fiber carabial threefold. Uh, the other uh, thing would be the theory with defect because you see the, the Nick Russell and, and his students his, in their recent papers, they, they already gave some results for 4D series with defect. Maybe there could also be the similar equation for 5D and 6D. Uh, another very, very interesting uh, guess I want to say is that uh, the mathematical theory in the Calabial side uh, for the blob equation is still unknown. I mean, in the Calabial, Calabial threefold side. Uh, we usually consider M theory complication on this Calabial threefold give rise to a 5D or 4D. If you do further complication, we can have a description for the blob equation in 4D or 5D directly. But in the in the Calabial threefold side, the theory is still missing. Uh, however, there, is, there exists a very interesting uh, theory called a uh, Degeneration formula for gomo witten theories, uh, which is wrote by by Jun Li in 2001. I mean, I would say it, it, it looks like blob equations uh, we studied here. Maybe this can be some uh, candidates for for the mathematical series of blob equation in the Calabial threefold side. Please, thanks, uh, thanks. Is there any question you can ask? Oh, sorry, it's very... Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? Could you say a little bit more about the last part? I thought mean, that you cannot stay in Calabriao. So blow up, blow up is not Calabriao. I mean, at least in the surface. In the Calabriao side, right, it's only in the we 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 we're, we understand it in the 4D or 5D side, but in the Calabial side, we cannot say too much. Uh, you, you don't have a, uh, so much understanding. But so I, my question was, are you sure that you can stay in Calabria threefold? I mean, you could have, you could need to consider the arbitrary threefold, not necessarily Calabria. Uh, for so, arbitrary? I think that the generation formula actually works for arbitrary Calabria threefold, but no, 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 not necessarily Calabria. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Uh, I said, so, yeah. I see. I think the most important uh, property of blob equation is that it contains three the same instant partition functions with different parameters. That's right. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, for generic Calabria or, or generic geometry or generic Calabria, we cannot, there may be some identity between the geometry, original geometry and some modified geometry, but yes. this structure may not hold, I guess. There, there should be some condition under which case this structure holds, but, uh, it should be explored in the in the future, I think. Yeah, so, so in this equation, so I mean, if you consider naively uh, the Calabria condition for surface, so then uh, the Calabria condition means epsilon one plus epsilon two equals zero. Mm -hmm. 
but the, this drop equation violates this condition. Even if you start with epsilon one plus epsilon two equals zero, mm -hmm. in the right hand side you cannot impose that condition. So that is my concern. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering that you really need to go outside of Caraglia. I, I I think there are recently has some mathematical description. You can use generic epsilon one and epsilon two. Indeed, the, the original degeneration formula only works for the cases when epsilon one plus epsilon two is zero. I see, I see, I but, see. But uh, that's why they don't have the structure before. Okay, I see, I see. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, may, may I ask why, uh, maybe this is, why, why it is epsilon one plus epsilon two being zero has anything to do with Calabria? I thought that's just a like parameter. I mean, this epsilons are parameter that acts on the the, the Minkowski space, the R four. R four or C two. So I'm considering this yeah. to be C two. And so epsilon one plus epsilon two equals zero means it preserves the simple the, the equivalent volume flow torus acting on C two with preserving symplectic structure. Mm -hmm. But if you just consider arbitrary epsilon one, epsilon two, it doesn't preserve the symplectic structure. So that's why what, what I mean. But uh, it's not a Calabria two four. Uh, right. Yeah. You mean you mean the C two? But that's that's mm -hmm. probably not uh, not an issue here. Um, if you go to Calabria three, you think it's not the issue? It, at least on the Calabria. Calabria side, um, uh, yeah, on the Calabria side, these epstones are two different, um, like string coupling constant, kind of. Um, yeah, but to, so for example, so uh, I have, I understand the geometric engineering for instance on zone C2, but I don't have geometric engineering for instance on zone the blower. Right. Uh, so that's some, some I, I, I thought that that is some bad sign and some are over structure to, to perform this directly in Karabiosity. Well, but anyways, I'm not sure. So just naive question. Um, any other questions? So um, the one thing that, um, I mean, I've been studying only the flow of equations uh, from the point of view of gauge theory. So um, this, in the gauge theory, kind of you can pinpoint uh, like where these flow of equation uh, is coming from. Uh, and you, you have just a handful number of flow of equations. Mm -hmm. But in, uh, in your case, I guess you can engineer the same type of gauge theory, say 5D gauge theories uh, in sure. some kind of the yeah, threefold. Yeah. And then it seems that you're getting many more um, equations than, than what uh, That's right. that can be directly found using the gauge theory description. So do you have any idea how these two things are related? Uh, let's still uh, talking about the example from E string to, to 5D theories. Uh, yeah, well, whatever. I mean, it could be just six gauge theory. Uh, but if you if you forget about the um, geometric engineering perspective, um, mm -hmm. like the one thing that I see is that uh, in the geometric engineering picture, mm -hmm. um, there's no real distinction between say Coulomb Coulomb web and the gauge coupling. Mm -hmm. So they are on the sort of equal footing. Uh, but okay. in, in the case of gauge theory description, you are actually picking some particular gauge theory to deduce a blow of equation or instant partition function or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder if uh, this uh, suggests some suggests something in the like in, in purely gauge theory side. Like, Sorry, like, your question is that uh, from from sixty. Uh, Higgs into to 5D, you could get more equations? No, 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 
no, it's not. I mean, I'm saying that you have more <laughs> blow applications that I know of. So, yeah, <laughs> like from the gate case side, perhaps, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm wondering like um, how you get like if, if there's any way to get this extra blow application directly from the gate shear perspective. Uh, I would say I don't have an understanding in the gate series side directly. But uh, so our method was we, we use this from the modularity of the, which would be some very strong constraint on the equation. And we just use that constraint and we check it. It, it, it is indeed correct, actually. But from the gauge theory uh, directly, there's no description at this moment. Uh, so, so for example, I, I would say that some of the geometry like local P1 times P1, which would be the pure SU2 gauge theory in 5D, there are two extra equations which will not appear in the initially uh, paper of, of Professor Nakajima's. Uh, I don't know how they arise in, in the gauge theory side. But indeed, from the blowdown of E string, there are indeed two actual equations. I believe that if you consider more 60 uh, uh, blow down side or Higgs inside, you could arrive, you could give rise to all the possible correct equations in 5D. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain them. Explain them in five D. Yeah, I mean, for example, do you do you also have blow applications for local P two? That's right. We have it. There are two of them. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For 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 example, uh, even for gay theory, I I expect that the blood equation should should hold even in strong coupling region, but I don't know how to prove it in mathematically. I mean, for example, at cyber written point, you, you should have corresponding blow up equation, but I don't know how to prove it. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like, uh, I to, to me, their result also suggests that, like, because uh, the suggestive in the sense, at least in 5D case, uh, it's like some of the blow up equations can be related using S duality. I'm not sure whether that's exhaustive, but. S duality really uh, exchanges Coulomb branch and the gauge couplings. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you, you actually generate more uh, blob equations. But yeah, but not sure if this uh, is good enough to generate all the blob equations that um, he's finding. Yeah, that, that, that's my comment. <laughs> Thanks. Um, any other questions? Okay, um, somehow, so the Zoom has changed this, uh, how to say, system, so somehow you need to put either password or some waiting room, so uh, I set up password now. But I, I need to think about that how to <laughs> solve this uh, hassle, but, but anyway, so next week, oh, oh, Johanna is left. Uh, Johanna <laughs> used to be here, but <laughs> in the audience, Johanna will talk about something. She doesn't send me a um, title no abstract, but um, yeah, so uh, if you may need a password even next week. Uh, I need to think about it, how to set up the, this Zoom uh, seminar. So I will stop the recording and leave the um, leave the space for open discussion. <laughs>